the astonishing X-Men, aka Axemen, are coming to Marvel Strike Force. What does it all mean? So much speculation surrounding this team. Plus, many players reaching level 80, and we are talking about the struggles and the bottlenecks of level 80, and a lot more on your Marvel Strike Wars Weekly News Update. This week, I am joined by my brother, Goofy Rexy. And if you're ready for it, my brother, Goofy Rexy, tell him what to do. Let's go upload the correct video this time. <laughs> That's a good idea. Valley flying. Valley Maniacs, I am Valley Flying. Welcome back to your Marvel Strike Force Weekly News Update. I am joined by this guy right there. What is up, Goofy Rexy, aka Goofy Sexy? How are you, my brother? I'm doing good, man. We here. We here. Ooh, we are. We are. Lots of stuff going on this week. Uh, astonishing X Men, aka the X Men, are coming, and so much speculation around this team. We're going to discuss it all, my friend. We're also discussing this military skill event coming up. Some more Blitz characters, and uh, yes. WandaVision. What what does that mean for Marvel Strike Force? Now, guys, we do this every single week. And if this is your first time here or you have not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell, the notification bell, so you know exactly what uh exactly when a new video is coming up. <laughs> but without further ado, before we get into all the news, I got I got an interview with Cerebro coming tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I want to give you a little bit of preview and you let me know uh what what uh, sounds the most interesting to you. So I'm gonna talk about what makes a character farmable? What is the dev's definition of that? Because there's been some controversy about that. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, talk about some potential new release methods for characters in 2021. Okay. Uh, war room upgrades they've been they've been teased in game for a long time is that something that we can expect in 2021 as well uh ways that alliance leaders can manage alliances we're also talking about legendary events potential reworks for hand ravagers coming in 2021 and api which is super super uh requested by the community and of course save squads save squads tabs and Real time arena. <laughs> yeah, we're discussing all of that. What? What are you out of that? What are you most looking forward to? What? What? Are, what answers are you looking forward to? And I mean, there's there's so much on that list. The API was one that stood out to me. Please, <laughs> API. All right. <laughs> well, API. well, the other thing that I know is going to interest you. I'm going to get an answer for what the heck fountainable means. <laughs> we are talking about that tomorrow. <laughs> Please, please, for the people, for the community, we need an answer, please. <laughs> we do, what the we do need an answer. We do. We, we definitely do. All right. So that is what is coming up on the channel. Let me know in the comments what you are most looking forward to. But uh, we just had this event end, the Red Winter event. And we've had events like this in the past. Character released. Uh, this is the first time we've had this kind of um, milestone eventy type release method for our character with Blitz Sim. So yes. did this add a lot of enjoyment that we can sim these blitzes for this event? I don't know if it added the enjoyment factor right. for me. I was I was able to get it done quicker and that I appreciated because of Blitz Sim. But I, I think with other things happening in the game, you know, the changes with RTA, stuff like that, I, I think this still kind of just felt really really grindy and also the orbs apart from the red guardian and some of the the red guardian shards and then the gold i was like yeah whatever yeah <laughs> the, the orbs orb. aren't that great i guess i guess the, i guess the better question would be was this event less painful for you than the anti-event event because that that was the event that yeah. turned me off the blitz i have hated blitz until yeah. this blitz sim came out so uh for me that made this event not as horrible as it could have been but right. yeah these orbs not great i think the most uh place that you're getting these uh shards for red garden were through these milestones by opening awesome. those orbs not through the actual orbs themselves i think it i think it equated to like one shard of red guardian per orb if you if you average it out which is which is a pretty horrible drop rate but uh if, if you're still looking for some red guardian shards psa here in blitz they're still awarding those fragments for those uh horrible orbs that we talked about so if, if you're needing just a couple of those red guardian shards well 
you, you could blitz sim harder guys and potentially get more uh, of those orbs and if, if you're lucky with that dual layer of rng maybe you can get some more red guardian shards how, how did you do on this event I, I did pretty well um on the event i was actually able to finish a couple days early before you know the event was done nice the um I, and i forgot to mention too like part of part of my issue with this was that the drop rates from like the fragments the fragment drops that you were getting from doing blitz sim yeah they were really low i mean there mm. there was a lot of 50s you know barely did i get any hundreds and i think i got like one 375 what one 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 drop of 375 okay and then maybe a thousand or so but majority of them are really 50 50 50 50 50 and a couple hundred so you know the the drop rates for doing blitz sim were significantly less i felt than manual blitz and i feel like people were manual blitz and were getting some higher drop rates so that did extend it a little bit longer which is probably what they anticipated what they wanted to do you know yeah. um but that made it the event overall was better than anti-venoms you know was able to get through it a little bit quicker but it was still i didn't like that the orb fragment drop rates i think those were pretty, pretty was bad. it was it was it different for non-sim blitz than for sim blitz because it, from from my recollection of this event in past yeah. i mean through the life of these events when they've happened in the past i think i've gotten maybe one or two two thousand shard yeah, okay. drops mm -hmm. on these kind of events in the past and and i've done a lot of blitzing for these events so it seems kind of rare but uh did did you get the the impression that the drop rates were better when people were manually blitzing and not as good when they were sim blitzing yeah i got the impression that the drop rates were were a little less um okay. when you were doing the blitz sim i think from what i can recall previously before i, I feel like i was able to get a few more hundreds than just getting 50s okay you okay. know um even if it wasn't getting the 2000s those those hundreds make a big difference right it's a it's a 50 more yeah. um every time so it, yeah i was still getting a lot of 50s but i was still getting a lot more frequent hundreds and i could go through a 22 blitz team 22 blitz rotation 22 team blitz rotation and i remember like 20 of them were all 50s i'm like Come uh, on, man <laughs> sounds so fun sounds so fun. yeah exciting <laughs> <laughs> well and, and where did your where did your red guardian end up because of this event did you get a four five star red guardian yeah i got him at four stars okay he's, nice. yeah he's got my four stars a little bit over four stars not anything nice. crazy um but yeah i was i was satisfied with you know you, with these events you shoot for a four star character especially considering that i didn't buy red guardian so i didn't buy any of the offers so that was actually pretty good gotcha gotcha no uh how much are you investing in this character how much how valuable do you think this character is that was we check it out um I, I got some good red star pulls on him but i'm still questioning uh, this military skill team it appears that they can yeah. kind of punch across or punch down against some of these top meta teams maybe not the mercs but a lot of these other meta teams that are out there uh is this is this wakanda 2.0 or is just just an incomplete team that we don't have all of the members of because this is i don't yeah. remember there being a military skill faction in the mcu yeah. or in the comic books uh, so i'm wondering if maybe this there is more characters that uh they cannot announce because they they're supposed to be surprised for the movies and that'll complete this team and that's why they're 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 not as uh they're not performing as much as uh, people are wanting without serious investment in this team yeah, so I definitely think that they're it, that they're missing a piece. Um, I don't know exactly, you know. Obviously, there it's an obvious fact that they're missing a piece. There's no fifth skill military character that they announced <laughs> or released, you know, with the team, right? There was none, right? But I think overall, I think a lot of people are doing a lot of theory craft, and I feel, I've heard people use dad bros, you know, with this team, um, you know, which is which is good. I think because of their their damage, their speed, yeah. you know, taking advantage also as well of Red Guardian being able to auto taunt. I just think that unfortunately you do need Red Guardian to be pretty beefy on this team in order for them to do as well because the other characters, you know, with respect to maybe Yelena because of her stealth. Um, don't have that much sustain. Punisher is pretty squishy. You know, you have Merc, Sol Merc, Merc Soldier, who's pretty squishy. Um, so the other characters <laughs> on the team are just pretty squishy in general. So not yeah. having, um, not having, you know, some additional sustain. You need Red Guardian to be pretty big. And um, for me, this this is not a character. This is not a team that's really on my radar right now because I feel like where I'm at in war, I need them to be very high for me to get any sort of good yeah. usage out of them. And I, in, in terms of red stars, you know, I think Yelena needs to have high red stars. I think Red Guardian needs to have high red stars. 
in order for it to work. And I was not fortunate to be able to get those red stars on these two characters. So therefore, they're kind of not on the radar for me. And I need them to be like 350, 370 in order for them to be able to to do anything efficient for me in war in terms of tackling um, and Marauders teams. But I feel like otherwise, outside of that, you know, they could be good against some other teams. But I guess like mentally, I'm still having that block of, well, you talked about potentially countering you know, a marauder. So if they're if I don't if they're not going to be able to do that for me, I don't really see the desire or the need for me to invest into this team. Yeah, I, th- I, I I still think that Red Guardian himself is one of the best tanks in the game. But for me, this military skill team or whatever they end up being once the uh, Black Widow movie comes out is is more of a long term investment because, like you said, my my military skill is about three hundred ish or so. Yep. I don't see a lot of Emirators in war that are around 300. I'm seeing 400, 500, 600k yeah. Emirators, and this team is doing nothing. So against Steve, even if they could counter metas, they, not not unless I put a lot of resources, spend a lot of money yeah. to uh, build them up. And I just, uh, I don't have the resources for that now. Um, let, let's move on to this next great team that we're talking about. And this, this one is kind of confusing me as well, but yeah. we got confirmation of the fifth member of this X-Men team. And as you can see this screenshot here, this, in, in case you guys weren't around this weekend, this was posted all over the official Marvel Strike Force social media accounts. Kitty Pride, talking about Kitty Pride, but the more important yeah. thing is this little corner right here where we see the fifth member of the team that was data mine, has been rumored for a while. So this is not a huge shock, but Bishop confirmed. And then uh, I, I get this was all removed later. So I guess, uh, <laughs> unofficial at this point but yeah it's it's it's, it's like a toothpaste once it's out of the tube you can't put it back in it's already right. been released publicly so right uh, <laughs> how hyped are you that bishop is officially the fifth of this team bishop was one of the characters that i wanted to be a part of this team so i'm i'm very excited about him coming into the game but i i'm i'm wondering now if him not being here anymore does that mean that he's not going to come into, I, don't, I don't know it, it, i'm confused I, now it, I, it looks like the confused. artwork is done dude i, I don't think I, yeah. I think they i think they released this and i thought yeah. oh this is some cool teaser that they're doing just throwing this out there maybe nobody notices and then uh yeah. by the removing you're like oops <laughs> we released this too early <laughs> we didn't want people to know about this yet I mean, so, we don't somehow. we don't even know Jubilee's full kit yet, and we know right, so. right, exactly. And my and my well, my speculation, not rumor, my speculation was that maybe the reason why they haven't fully released Jubilee's kit is because it probably has something to do with the fifth character, right? It probably names mm-hmm. the character in the kit. So I was like, maybe that's the reason why they haven't released the full kit yet. And I'm wondering if we're gonna get all this information on Friday. We we could we could. But yeah, this was kind of I feel like this was one of those situations where somebody scheduled the tweet to come out and then forgot that it was scheduled to come wait, out. And wait a minute. Wait released. a minute. You Are you <laughs> saying that there was a mistake from Scopely uh, regarding Marvel Strike Force? Is that does what? that never happen? Can that, I'm sorry. Can, I, I didn't know that was possible. What? No. <laughs> Uh, but 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 all right so let's say he is in the game let's say this is uh let's say they didn't remove this pose bishop is official which i think he is but uh uh, what are you what are you hoping he brings to this team and knowing knowing what you know about kitty pride Iceman, beast what do you think this team needs in order for them to be this uh elite raid team that they're kind of being billed as yeah so i just knowing what I know about, and I, I don't have this team. I don't really have. I don't even. I don't even have Kitty Pride yet. But just looking at the testings and looking at the kit overall, I think what they need is a. Well, I mean, yes, you do have some speed up with um with Beast, but yeah, I just from a Ray perspective, you know, I, I feel like in certain nodes, right, where you have some really fast characters, I feel like you almost need like somebody to slow the opposition down you know like right off the bat right like somehow to prevent or speed them up like on spawn or something like that so yeah that that, can, that's what i was thinking more because yeah. i think ice Iceman doesn't he do a lot of slows with his with his yeah ice ice mechanics and you know bishop is that time traveler and cable reminds turn meters so maybe maybe he's going to be kind of an upgraded version of cable or a, a or raid version of cable barrier somebody with barrier to help mm. to that would, barrier be nice. that would be nice to prevent them from taking on too much damage you know like if somebody had to give them barrier on spawn i'm thinking just because i'm assuming with kate with uh with bishop 
similar to me with cable right maybe potentially he might have charges um he you know i know cable also has barrier in the kit too so you know with um with bishop being able to maybe he he's going to give the rest of the team barrier on spawn so that they can kind of handle those big um i don't know when, when like those those raids man i mean like gamma raids i mean who are you you're facing some pretty Ooh. fast characters that can delete right off the bat right yeah. so you, you're gonna want you're gonna want them to have some initial sustain until you know kitty pride and iceman start getting going you know so that you can at least survive you know the, a wave or a you know, wave of first attacks my my thoughts this screenshot right here or i guess it's not a screenshot but this picture right here has him with this giant gun so yeah. <laughs> I was thinking he's going to be a blaster. He's going to be the damage yeah. dealer of the team. But protector kind of makes sense. I mean, we already have sure. Kitty Pride as a sort of protector on the team. I mean, she she has that class, but uh, she yeah. protects in a little, little different way than traditional. Um, so are you expecting him to be more of a someone that gives that barrier, rewinds that turn meter, or just someone that dealing crazy amounts of damage? I feel like you have to have some damage on this team. I'm thinking probably like some... Um, you know, I mean, Jubilee does call everyone to attack, right? Well, that's one attack. Yeah, we, you know? we don't know the cooldowns on that special, it, though. So it, it yeah, could be an awesome move that she's using all the time or it once could a be match every type two move. matches. Yeah. yeah <laughs> every two matches. That would be horrible. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like, like I feel like speed is going to be the factor on this team. I feel like Bishop has to give him some speed, okay. and I feel like yes, he has to give some sort of damage, like multi, mo like adjacent damage, you know, to to some of these character, some of the enemy characters there, or else I this team doesn't have damage at all. I mean, yeah, you're getting yeah. offense up from Beast, great, but you know, you need who is he giving offense up to that's going to really do some some damage here on the team? And I think you have to have. Bishop has to do some damage because the rest of them are are not really. I mean, Iceman is a controller, high health character, but not really high damage character. Beast, yeah. we already know, super squishy support character that does a lot of great things. Jubilee, we know very little of, and Kitty Pride, we know, um, Protector, you know, and, and her kit is is different. So yeah, I feel like Bishop has to kind of give them some speed up, maybe some barrier potentially, you know, and then definitely some damage. Well, well, we got we got to insight into that Jubilee kit, kind of what she does. And I got to say, I was yeah. a little disappointed that every single one of these uh, effects of her passive mentioned that Astonishing X-Men, which which makes me question her viability outside of this team. Outside. Even the special that we got is calling Astonishing X-Men allies to assist. So what we know of her kit so far. Does it is it would this be the first legendary that is is not really viable outside of her team? She looks like she's great on her team, which I think is the first requirement for a character to be good. But when if you if you're not using them on an astonishing X Men team, what how much how much value is she actually going to provide to this team? Yeah, I don't, I don't think she's going <laughs> to based on what I see right now. I just don't see how she's going to do anything. And I'm sorry if I had like a perplexed look on my face. It was just more like. Oh, the, Where did she you're not the only one that has that perfect <laughs> look with Jubilee, dude. So don't don't worry about it. I'm I'm trying to what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to like find the positive things to say about like her gotcha, kid gotcha. and what I've seen so far, and I just see the benefits on the Astonishing X Men team, which makes it all right. Let's just call it what it is. That's kind of whack. If it's just gonna be on her team, like, screw the seriously. positivity. Let's just be real. Yeah, it, it's That's weird, why? right? For a legendary like, character to have very little of viability outside of her. Obviously, we don't know her, her basic and her ultimate. They yeah. would have to be pretty solid for her to give some viability. But what we know so far, I, I gotta say, it's a, it's a little disappointing. Now, uh, yes. one one of the things they're supposed to do is be this ultimate raid team, and. That's mm -hmm. that's confused me for a while, for yeah. a little while because we just got the symbiotes. Symbiotes dominate any raid that they're available that they, you can enter them in. But yep. that you can't enter them in all the lanes of these Greek raids, especially with these new difficulty four and the sliders all the way up to slider three on difficulty four. Very very uh, difficult. Is that what you think the the use of this astonishing X Men team is, or is it something further down the road, like Ultimus eight or something like that? I feel like potentially maybe they're if if it's just for Greek raids, what like why I, I don't need a specific team certain just for Greek lanes raids. of the Greek raid, not even the whole Greek raid. <laughs> exactly, like certain <laughs> lanes of the Greek raid. Like why do I need that at all? You know, don't don't give me that. They're 
if there is going to be an ultimate eight, then I guess this is a good team to, to go for. But then you're tying it behind having a legendary character, which then makes ultimate eight a, an incredibly difficult <laughs> you know, task for, I mean, a lot of the player base, right? Hey, if you don't have Jubilee and you don't have the Astonishing X Men team, then get wrecked. Like it's it's, it's, it's it's weird, especially especially since it take took a while for there to be Ultimate Seven to come out after we got Ultimate Six. So it could be another year before Ultimate Eight. So yeah, Greek I just, Greek raid team. That's that's what this is. Although they may have some other use that we will talk about in the speculation. So uh, just yeah. stay tuned for that, guys. We're going to talk about uh, what the other use of this team could potentially be. And we, we talked about it a little bit on the news last week with Tony, and I've mentioned it before, but I, I, want, I do want to get your take on that. Uh, yeah. let, let's talk about this. I just got to level 80. I know you just got to level 80. And judging by what I'm hearing in the community on the live streams, a lot of people are reaching level 80 this week. Yeah. Bottlenecks galore. My goodness. I opened a lot of my orbs this past weekend. I was expecting to maybe take some characters up right away, and uh I can, but only about five of them. Not not six, yeah. not seven, not eight. Just just the bare minimum five characters. Uh what what kind of bottlenecks are you experiencing now with uh hitting level 80? Is it gold? Is it training mats? Is it these yeah. gear 15 uniques getting these characters ready for Dark Dimension 4? What what is what is your experience right now with this level 80? With with level 80 for me right now, and with the Emma milestones currently active, I'm having to make an active, you know decision to say you know what i am not going to spend the 2.4 anymore to get you know emma um you know to get those emma shards because i have to start thinking now about okay well what about you know dark dimension four yeah and i'm a resource management guy you know like i said i'm a cheap to play guy that's me right <laughs> so i'm always thinking about resource management and like mm -hmm. what like how like how long is it going to take for me to recuperate this and i know that emma shards are important but i i got her to six stars you know okay. and there's no chance for me to get her to seven so i'm kind of like well let's slow it down a little bit and start slowly investing and then i started to do slowly investing into some other teams okay you know and some other characters to to be viable for war but then now as i progress i'm starting to look at training mats and i'm like well i gotta get characters to level 80 eventually i'm not, I'm not even gonna have enough training mats to be able to do that over and quickly right it's gonna have yeah. to be over a week period to be able to get a character to level Ooh. 80. so it's just i'm just like looking at looking at like the all the bottlenecks i'm like you know what and i'm also not done with dark dimension 3 yet for my second run so i'm also okay. probably doing i'm probably pr like planning things out way too early but it's it's just one of those things where I feel like there's a rush from the community, which is which is making me say to myself, you know, where I am in at in the game, let's not rush this. Let's wait. Let's take a slower process because the bottlenecks, I can see them. I can see the training mat deficiency. I can see the gold deficiency. I can see, you know, the gear deficiency because I'm yeah. using the planning guy for DD4 right now. And I'm like the catalyst. I need two 2100 focus catalysts just to be able to get five characters into DD4. Yes. And I currently have 785. Oh, yeah. Bottlenecks. So, but but you will get some when you finish Dark Dimension 3. So th th hopefully that eases up the bottlenecks for you. Uh, as as far as as far as your catalyst, now those, those uniques, those 15 uniques, they're, they're yeah. still a huge bottleneck for a lot of players. Uh, but as you're looking at your roster right now, who are you leaning towards right now for your first five? For Dark Dimension 4. Yeah, so I, I thought long and hard about this and I did the math, looked at what I have now, what I could potentially have in about three to four weeks, right? And okay. I think the the one that and also who's gonna be effective, not just in DD4, but then also outside of it. Yeah. And I feel like I, I ghost is kind of like the outlier for me because I feel like I don't really have a good place for her outside of DD4. Okay. But also if I go into Dark Dimension 4 without ghost, I might regret life. So I'm <laughs> let's just let's just bring her as one. Uh Mr. Sinister, the okay. clones are just incredibly important. Okay. You know, and they're they're he's making my global run right now in Dark Dimension 3 seem like a breeze i mean really yeah, it's okay, still, okay. It's, it's still nice. yeah it's still taking probably 20 it's still gonna take me 20 attacks but that's different than the 31 that took me the first time so <laughs> gotcha gotcha <laughs> so all right so those are two and, and i'm actually thinking of taking both of those as well 
Yeah, uh, and then there's um I thought about Thanos because of Black okay. Order and Arena. You that's, know, that's so the like, third okay. one that I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, we're thinking then, um, we're thinking the same so far. Let, let's see what these last two are though. <laughs> um, I thought about also for global. I went back and forth with Black Widow or Zemo, and I ultimately just landed on Zemo. Yes, he's costly, but I can still find value out of him with a hybrid team in war. So Zemo is going to be a fourth option for me. Okay. And then I also um, went with, I'm thinking about going with Sabretooth just because mm. of how difficult right now my other global, my other characters are looking right now for global because gotcha. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get a lot of global in there first because yeah. that's going to be right after the first the the first one um so and then i thought about also symbiote spider-man also but you know, right, so, so symbiote spider-man is going to be my fifth i looked at i looked at all my mutant gear 15 gear and i was like i need to save this i need to save this for emma i need to save this for sinister yeah. and i could do sinister right away emma i don't have those 72s uh the sinister's yeah. a little cheaper as far as gear 15 than uh emma is so yeah i'm i was thinking of sticking saber tooth as soon as i saw how many gear 15s i had I'm like yeah, I, I don't have the resources to do that. Even if he's yeah. cheap, I, I got to go with Emma because she's going to get a lot more viability outside of that. And uh, I, I'm I'm still not sure of my fifth. Uh, it's between Zemo, Yelena, and Black Widow. I'm, I'm still not decided, but that, that's, 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 that's the re direction I'm going right now with uh, these yeah. characters. I think Symbiote Spider-Man is going to be a must. I'm going to have to drop one of those to make because Symbiote Spider-Man is just going to make ultimately a lot more sense in my life <laughs> yeah i mean he's gonna he's gonna get, uh, help you in all the raids that you're doing right now with the rest of the yeah. symbiote so uh giving you some vital and then remember once you're entered with those first five you don't need to go in with a team of five every uh for all of your subsequent right. battles now we were also getting this covert ops event and uh yeah we were talking about this earlier uh, as, as i'm looking in game right now it looks like it's starting in about a day and, and maybe a couple mm -hmm. hours from us recording this but uh we're gonna have to deploy military characters not necessarily military skill which which is good because it opens it up to more characters but we're gonna have to use them in arena blitz raids uh to earn points for milestones and we already have the orbs in the game right now these armory yeah. 14 and 15 orbs and i guess this is to help ease up some of these bottlenecks for all these players that are reaching level 80 this week and uh, trying to get their characters up to level 14, level 15 gear to get into their uh, dark dimensions. But uh, yeah, are you expecting a lot of uh, gear from this event? Uh, how long do you think this is gonna go on? And uh, how many orbs are you hoping to open? <laughs> Yeah, as, as as much as I can. As much <laughs> as, 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 as much as I can. I'm trying to go for those 15s. You know, DD3, the second DD3 row will take care of my DD, my my 14 pieces. But I need those 15s, man. Um, those 15s, because uh, I, I have a good chance of being able to start, you know, DD4 right after. Um, Originally, I was salty. I was salty about the military characters. But then I, I said to myself, self. Uh, that's I mean you could bring in a couple of characters into arena and you could lose right you lose a couple yeah. matches a day you raids you know just be smart about it use killmonger in some of those lanes whatever right I think beta is yeah. going to be starting you know on Sunday or is it gamma I don't remember Captain Marvel gamma, but... Captain Marvel as well don't forget Captain about Marvel. her yeah Captain Marvel is also a good option too so there's a couple options that you have available to use in raids obviously if you're use if you're do, dealing with the difficulty sliders that might not be viable for you so that may be a little bit of a frustration for the community where that's concerned yeah um when i completely understand that but this is all about blitz right a lot of these are all about blitz how many mm -hmm. rotations of blitz can you get in you know that's really kind of what it is so i'm going to be setting my timer again two hours uh, blitz, you know, blitz has become a very <laughs> very important game mode since since we got yeah. blitz sim people were thinking oh blitz is not gonna be very important but yeah very yeah. very important since they added that blitz sim it really is uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right so in addition to, to this covert ops event coming up we also look we look like we're getting a new addition to the war store usually they do that on wednesdays so uh yeah. and i have not seen her in there yet i don't think anybody has but as yeah. of today i expect her to start popping up right. uh but war store for yeah. ghost we just got minerva added to that store uh <laughs> how how what what where would you have liked to see goes become farmable instead of the war store and i know that listen i, I know that the player base is probably gonna or at least for the mid game or earlier players probably would have hate this idea yeah but i thought that that graviton node in doom was where they were gonna end up throwing 
you know, ghost. And mm. that would have made a lot more sense to me if they had done that that way. And then I also looked at a couple of the, the later game notes, too. I uh-huh. mean, in the villains in the villains no- campaign, um, there's one slot where they could probably throw like villain chapter seven. They could have thrown ghost in there somewhere. Hero chapter seven. They could throw her in there too. There's a next. There's Nexus Eight where you could. Th- I mean, there's options that they have available. Yeah. You know, I feel like they purposefully put her in the war store because they know that she's a difficult. She's a she's a character that not everybody has because she was the 50, 50 shard. You know, release fifty fifty dollar release in the game. So they know a hundred shard unlock. So they know a lot of people are not going to have that many shards and war stores a grind. So I think they purposely like, you know what. Yeah, you're gonna have to grind out ghosts if you really want to unlock Jubilee. There's so much value in that war store right now. We got all yeah. those 14 uniques, 15 uniques. We also got some really, really great characters. A lot that unlock yeah. legendary characters. We got we got characters like Minerva, and then we got a bunch of trash characters that I think the community <laughs> is saying Nobu. that they should get out. Uh, yeah, Nobu, Nobu. What? Why is he? Why was he even added there in the first place? I mean, he's had a node for a while. Why is oh, he in wow, the war man. store? For a while, <laughs> but, but yeah, maybe, maybe okay. So the Ghost is going there, but maybe some of these nodes you mentioned, like the villains, heroes, maybe that's where they add stature. Maybe that's where they yeah. add Yellow Jacket, just so people can what have time to farm this team before Jubilee comes out to the game. Well, the Yellow Jacket is currently fountainable in the um and PB in the RTA thing, so. You don't need to add oh. yellow jacket anyway. Oh, I thought I, I didn't know that <laughs> counted. I thought it was only when he got added to orbs. I, I thought you were going to talk about the orbs because he did get fountainable in the orbs. <laughs> we can fountain him. That's <laughs> true. We can't fountain him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And, and you know who else is fountainable in orbs? This guy right here, Agent Colson. Now he just he just I mean, got a little little easier for newer players. Instead of what yeah. what was he before a four star unlock? He was a, he was a hundred and eighty shard unlock. All right, which, so four star. Now wow. now he's a hundred shard <laughs> unlock. Uh, what what why 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 is is this just to make it easier for newer players to get that uh, their first awesome war defense team with uh, Co- actually maybe not the first because Nick Fury is not a very early farm yeah, either. Early. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't early. recommend. So what 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 is this for? Why why Colson thirty shards? Uh, I, I know some people in the Valley Club was mentioning the offer that was there. That's we were supposed to be able to unlock Colson, uh, but. Yeah, it, with with 100 shards, that wouldn't happen until now. So yeah. what what are your suspicions? Why did they do this? I think the reason why they did this, I think when, when Colson was released, uh, you know, the Fury Colson team was such a very strong war defense team. Yeah. And I think that's the, they wanted to put Colson, you know, as a as a further to get to unlock, you know, because they didn't want everybody to have access to such a superior war defense team. And I think yeah. now... A lot of people are splitting Colson up and putting him somewhere else. He's starting to lose, I guess, that initial sort of crazy value that he had. He's still very valuable as a character. Yeah. But um, I just think that he's there's so many other teams now, like the Emma Rogers, the Mercs, you know, they've kind of taken over as being superior war um, characters. And they're just like, you know what? Well, it just seems like it's time to, you know, um, to kind of lower, lower the shard unlock for him. I mean, I think even with like Captain Marvel, you, we we could kind of see them kind of making some changes where that's concerned too. you know, Captain Marvel now farmable in a node, you know, things like that. Um, I think that they're starting to probably do some things here with the milestone orbs. They're supposed to be seasonable, seasonal, seasonal soon. Right. So um, I, I think they're just mm, making some, I forgot about that. Some, yeah. Some quick changes here, you know, and I, I think this is the right way to go. You know, I, I think that my speculation is that because he was so, he was such an important character for war defense with Fury Coast initially, that now he's probably not as important anymore. So they're kind of just lowering the lowering the the shards that you need in order to be able to unlock them. Well, that that does make sense. So uh, yeah, Agent Colson got a little easier for yeah. newer players to get. Now, one thing that's probably unfortunately not going to be very easy for newer players to get is our upcoming Blitz character this week, and Ooh. that is our girl. We mentioned her before. Kitty Pride, and uh, if 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 you already bought her, you know you know that she's a pretty good character. But if you have yeah. not unlocked her, uh, I think people are going to be blitzing hard, especially with these covert op 
milestones that are coming up. Uh, yeah, the Red Guardian event ended, but we still have these milestones that we have to blitz yeah. with military characters for. So uh, what are your expectations for this score? We see the scores for Yelena, about 32 for that first blitz. I think the second blitz came out to a little higher, about 33. Are you expecting the the uptick in scores to be a little bit higher just to be in line with the new character or because there are some legendary rumors for this astonishing x-men team she is a new character we have new milestones going on for more gear 15 gear 14 parts do you expect yeah. this scores to be exponentially higher for this week's blitz no, I think we're probably going to see them around what we're what we're seeing with like Cole and Yelena, you know, because Yelena was uh, was also with, with the Red Winter um, event too, right? So I feel like we're going to see kind of the same similar numbers, you know, that we saw with Yelena, and definitely probably what we saw also with um, who else was in that event? Was it also Ironheart? Ironheart was part of it too, right? Uh, yeah, um, we had Ironheart. We had Cole before that. Uh, Long yeah. shot Rocket Raccoon before that. So yeah, uh, so I bunch, bunch of good I characters. Yeah, I definitely think that, you know, these this, these numbers are going to be pretty high, especially because of that G15 gear that you can get from opening up those cover op orbs. Um, so with that event starting in a day from now. So I, I, I think the numbers are going to be very high. A lot of later game players are going to be blitzing hard. I'm going to be blitzing hard, you know, because I want to get those frags, you know, as well to open up those orbs. So, yeah, I, I think numbers are going to be pretty as as um as um as 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 diesel train said they're gonna be pretty diesel diesel <laughs> pretty diesel <laughs> pretty diesel <laughs> all right so yeah blitz harder if you want to get kitty pride this week uh and then uh, next week is kitty pride as well and then yeah. boom this guy iceman Ooh. coming very soon and yeah. there was a lot of speculation about his release method and yeah. i was thinking maybe in another event like this red guardian event maybe a campaign like we saw with, I think it was Shatterstar, but no. Yeah. Blitz release, cold as ice, which means this <laughs> is the fourth Blitz character released oh this patch. How much How much are you loving this Blitz sim right now? I mean, how bad would your life be right now if you had to, if you had to manually Blitz for four brand new characters all in a row, or maybe not in a row, but in the same patch? Yeah. My goodness, imagine how crazy, how crazy time-wise this would be, especially with the uh, real-time arena in the game. Yeah, I mean, even now, man, because you think about it, right? We, the number the scores have gone much higher. Usually before, I'm only doing four to five rotations a day. Now I'm I'm maxing out my eight rotations a day in order to mm. be able to get these numbers, Ooh. man. So, you know, you 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 think you think about that. I mean, I'm essentially spending it's spent i'm spending less time doing it but also i still have to remember to do it yes yeah. <laughs> too right um and on top of that with rta and them changing the abilities that you have to do now you know or changing the the objectives in a sense and what you have to do to obtain those objectives i think this is crazy listen my wife might not like me no more because of this whole all no these blitzes, man. <laughs> no not don't do it mrs sexy <laughs> Please, please don't, please don't. No, she, please she's don't. Please, please, please like please him. <laughs> but yeah, this, uh, yeah, I, I think the score is going to go crazy with this, especially with yep. these rumors that we're talking about. Uh, and that is that is uh, surrounding another X Men character. And speaking you of X Men characters, boom, we got this one coming up, returning the legendary Phoenix coming back now. She has fallen out of the meta a little bit, but it's still a very good character. One of the best yeah. legendaries that you can get. And uh, yes, villain, mystic controllers. And I think the big bottleneck for a lot of players is going to be hella. Because uh, yeah, if you can avoid it, yeah. hopefully you could avoid hand assassin. But do you have any recommendations for newer players? I know I know you got to that uh, with your baby account before before you uh stopped that account but yeah. uh what what recommendations would you have for newer players that are trying to unlock that uh hella node uh to, to unlock phoenix and potentially some other legendary characters yeah i mean i i think hella is definitely going to be the better character to go for hand assassin i just i i cannot in in good faith recommend you know you go after hand assassin she's just not a good character Unless you face her in U7, then she wrecks your entire team. But the <laughs> but when, for you, she will not be good. Um, I think what what I the, the difficulty with 
you know, with Hella is that you have to get to level 70 before you can actually even attempt to get to her node. And you have to complete yeah. Heroes 7 1 before you can even try Villain 7 1 2, 7 1 2 and 3, you know, and eventually get to 7 6 to unlock Hella. So the problem yeah. with that is, you know, and what I always tell um, players is, or beginner players is, don't worry about it until you probably get to level 65. That's probably when you start to target and focus, okay, who am I going to use now? To try to get to um that hella node and like i said seven one seven two seven three you gotta you're gonna have to get look you're gonna have to have an aim team a full aim team at least 120 to 150 you know 150k you know, to be able to get it done or a zemo hybrid team but you know zemo is not farmable you know so you gotta get lucky with that character so it's it's quite a daunting task that's the reason why i recommend you know going in after phoenix later because it's gonna take you a while to farm hell to get the six stars. You can get the other ones pretty easy. Loki, Mordo, Nobu. You know, you can get Rona. You can get those characters to six stars pretty quickly. But for hell up particular, it's it's gonna take you a little while. You gotta wait until you get level seventy. You know, and you and you still think they should be going even even because of the timing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, even despite the timing, you still think the newer players should be going after uh, Hella instead of uh, going for a placeholder like a hand assassin. Yeah, I think so, because I think Phoenix, while she can be helpful for you early, if you get her earlier, I still think that she is for me is a late game legendary that really holds value once you get to the late game portion, which is for me, like doing Dark Dimension 3, okay. you know, Dark Dimension 4, you, even your arena shard, you can get away with using Ultron and Black Bolt. Um, and then, of course, let's talk about Black Bolt, right? Yeah. You, know, you need Hela to get to Black Bolt as well. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you just got to focus on going after Hela and not going after Hand Assassin because Hand Assassin, you're going to, yeah, you're going to farm to get her to six stars and it's easier for you to get her, but you still have to pay the the 80,000 to get her to four, Ooh. the 150,000 gold in order to be able to get her to five. And then the, <laughs> the, the 200, that was, I'm forgetting how much is 200,000 gold to get her to six. You still have to spend to be able to do it and then level yeah. her up to us. If you don't have Hela, to be able to do the unlock, you're going to have to level up Hand Assassin with the other characters to a certain point so that she can actually help you to, to unlock Phoenix. So for me, Hela is still the better character. You need her for Black Bull. Better to use her to get Phoenix after that, too. So definitely would say Hela's a better even, character. Even if it delays the Phoenix unlock. Delays. Okay. Yeah, even gotcha. if it delays. Now, scrolling down a little, we, we have a block party event coming back today or this week not today uh but <laughs> as as would usually with chaos theory block party i was i was gonna ask my guest what are you gonna do with the resources i mean are there any t4s that you've been looking to upgrade that you've been waiting for this event to return for this or yeah. are you just gonna save them once you get all those t4s um oh they're gonna use they're, right, they're who, definitely who are, you, who are you gonna use them on who are you gonna use them on so I have Proxima. I need her basic. Um, okay. I want to. I want to be able to get those assists. Good. And I also have um, X twenty three. I have her ultimate that I would like to invest okay. into. Well, so um, those are the two ones that are kind of top. Or I might go with Ghost passive. I'm not sure yet. There's three characters potentially right. that I could put some P4s on. I think. I think all of them are very valuable. It just depends what you're going to be using in the game right, right now. Is the the order that you should do those in. But uh, yeah, I, I think eventually you should get all of them. They're they're all, all very valuable yeah. ones. <laughs> And as for me, I'm just I'm just gonna save them. I'm gonna save them. I, I I'm saving a bunch for this astonishing X Men team. Haven't put any into it yet because I don't know the kit, yeah. the full kit of Bishop. I don't know the full kit of uh, Jubilee. So I'm, I'm waiting because there was some overlap with Proxima's kit and with Ebony Maw's kit. And I did a bunch of Proxima. I was like, oh, I didn't need to do that uh, one yet. Once okay. once Ebony Maw came out, so uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on this one. Not a bad call. Not a bad call. That's a good one. Yeah. WandaVision made its premiere on Disney Plus this past week. They look like a very happy Dick Van Dyke Bewitch type couple, which uh, yeah. is very similar. Now, with, uh, I don't want to talk about uh, too many spoilers of the show itself, yeah. but uh, what do you think this means for MSF? What kind of characters are you predicting that we could possibly see in Marvel Strike Force based on uh, some of the things you've seen in this TV yeah. show and some of the things that uh, you know is coming up because it trailers and things like that that we've seen previously yeah i've i've been reading some stuff i hope because i'm you know marvel nerd uh so i've been reading some stuff what? about the show what? You, and what? well uh, yeah i mean who who would have thought who, would, it, who right? would cover a marvel game that was <laughs> anyway anyway bad jokes aside keep going yeah well, uh, for, for that joke i guess i got to give you one of these 
Oh, I didn't even hear that. That's that. That's how bad my joke was. All right. <laughs> didn't even hear it. Uh, uh, but okay. listen, uh, so so yeah. I mean, in in for me personally, um, I think the I've been reading it too much. M- Mephisto's name it just keeps on being thrown out there. This yeah. at me, this at me. Everything I read, for the most part, I think Mephi- that everything is kind of leading up to Mephisto. Um, and I'm wondering if not just like WandaVision, but if a lot of these speculation, a lot of these series, Loki and the rest of them, I'm wondering if all of them somehow tie into Mephisto is a question that I have um, mm, because I've just been seeing so much of it. Um, but that's my that's that's what I'm thinking in regards to the the series itself. No spoilers, but um, I like it. I like it so far. I like it so far. Yeah, my 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 kids really liked it. I I enjoyed it as face value. I didn't see a lot of the Easter eggs until I watched some videos on the thing. I was like, oh yeah, yeah that's what that means. That was that means. But yeah, I think but I think Mephisto. As soon as we saw the trailers and uh, knowing what we know about these characters, Mephisto seems very very likely. Uh, yeah. Also 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 <laughs> another character, <laughs> uh, Ag- Agatha Harkness is kind of a witch that's kind of a rival of Scarlet Witch. So potential of her maybe coming to the game. Uh, Mutants, more mutants coming to Marvel Strike Force. And uh, maybe two that could be referenced in this show, Speed, Wiccan, who are uh, the kids of uh, of Vision and Wanda (laughs) and have some relation to Mephisto as well. And then and then a lot of that sword team. Which is which is kind of like the Agents of Shield, but is the Space Division, and uh, so a bunch of characters one. from that could uh, okay. also potentially be featured in Marvel Strike Force. So uh, let me know your thoughts, guys. Who do you think yeah. we can see from this TV show uh, in Marvel Strike Force? Let me let me know who you would want to see as well. Wonder Vision, Wonder Vision. Oh yeah, yeah baby, I love that. I love it. I, I told you, <laughs> goofy, sexy, baby. All right, and now it is time for the rumors and not a lot of brand new rumors. This is one that's been floating around for a while, but last week, Tony mentioned that maybe this is the legendary unlock. That's what Jubilee is. So a legendary unlocking a legendary, and we already have precedent of that with Black Bolt being one of the requirements to unlock ebony maw so do you think that we're gonna follow this trend i mean it happened around the same time last year we got a legendary very early on in the year and then towards the mid part of the year we have another legendary that that legendary unlocked so do you think this astonishing x-men team is gonna be valuable not just for their potential in raids but do you believe these rumors that this could be another team that or this is another legendary that this team is going to unlock I think that there's a possibility I, at this point I'm I'm game for anything that makes her more valuable than what she seems to be right now. Gotcha. Um, so if if that's the case, then I guess I welcome it <laughs> because nice. I, I just don't I just I don't I don't see it. I don't understand, you know, really what she does yet. Um, so other than, you know, potentially using them. But like I said, I'm being tough on it because we don't see We haven't seen the basic. We haven't seen the ultimate. We don't know what it does yet. So until then but i i feel this we felt like this was going to be a trend a long time ago we thought that we thought when we saw black bolt that that was going to be a case right so you know we we black bolt unlocking mom we thought that that was going to be something that they were going to continue to do um i'm like wondering if like somehow that ever ties into apocalypse We'll see. Mm, I, 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 a lot of the a lot of the comments from last week's video was, "Oh, it's gonna be apocalypse that this this team unlocks, and uh, that that would be really cool for especially." If we have that kind of empowered mechanic that we saw with Thanos right. and there are so many horsemen, if you put them on a team with Apocalypse, I would love to see them turn into that empowered state, become yeah. that horseman version of that character. Uh, yeah, it would make him so game. valuable, it would make him so fun too. Yeah, a lot of them are already in the game too. You know, you have Storm, right? You know, yeah. you also have, you know, Psylocke was also mentioned there too. Yeah. You'd have Wolverine. to bring in Archangel. You have to, yeah, Wolverine. Yeah, also you, you need Angel. You need Angel and turning into Archangel. That I think yeah. that's a requirement. I was that's that's who I thought with the fifth was going to be. Honestly, not Bishop. Yeah, I did. thought it was going to be Angel just because okay. of that or Nightcrawler. But those, those were not two my guesses. But yeah, Bishop. Bishop, not a bad character. It's a decent not choice, a bad character. Actually. Yeah, pretty yeah. good. All right, so uh, yes, believe or don't believe. Are are you going to go hard on this team because of these rumors, or or they're just rumors, and you're going to take the take it as it comes? I'm going to take it as it comes, especially with okay. the way that I play. I play the game, man. I mean, cheap to play. I normally get these characters on second pass, so 
Gotcha. <laughs> Take it as it goes. Uh, I, I, I gotta, I gotta treat them like they're real though, because I, I want to make content <laughs> on the yeah. latest and greatest legendary characters. So I gotta go hard for this team. I hear you. <laughs> even hear if they, you. even if they, there's no unlock with it. <laughs> All right, but that is it, my friend. As usual, always a pleasure. It is always fun and a lot of fun stuff to talk about this week. Oh, yeah. uh, let everybody know where they can find you. And if you have any uh, events coming up, anything coming up that you want to promote, my brother. Yeah, so you can find me on well, Goofy Rexy on YouTube and Goofy Rexy on Twitch. When you go there, you can find all my other links to Twitter, Facebook, um, and a link to my Discord too. And if you guys don't know already, I am currently doing a beginner series on Wednesday nights on Twitch. I do nice. also post that beginner series um, on YouTube on the weekend. So you'll be able to see that there too. But listen, I want to help out the beginner players. I know that there's a lot of content that is super late game-ish. So I'm trying to bridge, bridge the gap there to make sure that you guys are all taken care of too as beginner players. Nice. So yeah, yeah, anybody that's wondering about more beginner content, mid game content started, he started a brand new account just so he could see where you guys are, what you guys are going through. So, uh, yes, goofy, goofy is the man for a lot of beginner content. Plus he knows a lot of, uh, uh, later game stuff as well because your yeah. main account is is pretty late game as well yeah. <laughs> uh, make sure you check him out on his channel we got a fun video dropping tomorrow over on his channel so uh go over check it out make sure you subscribe and uh smash the notification bell on his channel so you know exactly when that drops do it for this channel as well um yeah. and i will see you guys next time check out some of my other videos before you go check me out on social media and goofy before you go give me that fist bump baby where is it? Oh yeah, oh, yeah baby. Valley Flat and Goofy Rexy.